Rishi ji, uh, you know, I want to ask you about something that we see, uh, you know, in India particularly, but also sometimes in the in the way West and the Western media uh, looks at India, and that is, you know, despite the beauty and the profoundness of our culture, uh, there are many sections, like I said, in the in India and in the West uh, that are adamant on, you know, branding any cultural or civilizational resurgence uh, of Bharat as some kind of uh, belligerent, uh, you know, Hindu nationalism uh, without really um, understanding what, what they're talking about. Uh, you know, can you, can you share your perspective on that? Well, of course, we live in a world of advertising, don't we? Yes. So the first thing to understand is that that was the extension of the, the corporations that are doing the advertising were the companies that stole everything around the world. So the East India Company, as it was called, the Canadian companies, all were for the same thing. It was to steal the property of the culture. So our modern corporations have one agenda, and that's to make money for the shareholders. So we have a CEO and a CFO and we're missing one person inside corporations. And I call that one the CCO, the chief conscience officer. So a corporation is an organization to get profit without a conscience with no guarantee that what it's doing is helpful or useful for human beings or animals or anyone else. So corporations are simply a group of people, greedy people taking whatever they can get. Now, not all of them behave that way because some people behave better. But it's important to understand that this is the basis of Western civilization. And that even its religions were turned to the service of doing that. So this problem of being just for profit, of just taking and not giving back, mm -hmm. is the difference between the Vedic civilization and the Western civilization. But because profit only is the basis of corporations, the word advertising is actually a kind of magic that you do. Where I show you a commercial and the commercial forces you, kind of hypnotizes you. So you'll come and buy our product. Yeah. It's not an argument for the truth of our product. It's a kind of magic that's used that you will buy our product. Yeah. So it shows a happy couple with their children in a car. And they're laughing and talking and it's just 10 seconds. And then it shows you the car from behind and it says Toyota. Yeah. Now that's an advertisement. The message is spend your money on this car. It'll make you happy. It'll make you happy with your children and your family. So. That lie is a secret trick of controlling the mind through this science of advertising. You hear the word advertisement? So what is yoga? Yogas chit vritti niroda. Removing the vrittis. The vrittis are the twisted parts of us that have been twisted by being in the material world yeah. and are keeping us from knowing who we really are and for working cooperatively with the laws of nature. So yoga removes the effect of advertising. Same word, the English word advertisement the vert is vritti. It's twisting you till you buy our product. So this is the problem. 
right? You see? Yes. That, that explains a lot. Wow. Because, yes, these vrittis and this way of life, which is based around making vrittis, yeah. is a culture of lying yeah. and pretending and facade and advertising. So all of it is to get selfish profit. Mm. And that's the final goal and purpose of everything. Mm. Okay. Now, religion tolerates that because they also are being coercive and du duplicitous. Yeah. They're pretending to be like Jesus. And on a bad day, they go out and try to ruin your civilization, steal everything from you. So back to your question. Then speaking badly of your culture and making up bad stories about you that are lies and untruthful yeah. and promoting those as the truth yeah. is the way that that is done. Yeah. Now, there's a term for that in linguistics. It's called framing. Okay. So framing is when I say, well, so you're from that uncivilized, uh, recently naked, illiterate culture that believes in many gods and has idols, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So I just framed you in about four different ways. Mm -hmm. The gun is now pointing at you to prove that you're not those things. Mm -hmm. Yes. So here's the rule. If you say those things are not true, the frame only gets tighter because you didn't refute them. You denied them. When Richard Nixon, the president of the United States, was being impeached, he was being accused of being a criminal. Oh. And he got the microphone and he one day very famously said, I am not a crook. Yeah. So the frame was, he was a crooked president. He mm -hmm. tightened the frame by denying it. Okay. okay. So the same reason that I've changed the Gita, cool. the Hindu civilization, the Vedic culture of Bharat has not learned how to use language to remove the frames that have been put around them. Okay. Yeah. You can only do it by the correct use of language. You can't go and get all excited and get upset. I am yeah. from Bengal and I'm very upset with what you are saying. And his emotions are out of control. He doesn't sound rational and he's reacting. Yeah. Does the frame get tighter yeah. or get removed? Let's talk about he's proving your point. Yeah. There's an old saying, never argue with a fool because the people watching won't know the difference between you. Yeah. Okay. So this means if you don't learn how to reframe the situation. Yeah. So a reframe would be, who are you to criticize us? You're the civilization that has all of our wealth in your museums and libraries and who spent the last 300 years taking everything we had and millions of our civilization co-contributed to your well-being in the last two wars and did so many things that no one even talks about or recognizes. You robbed and stole from the First Nations cultures where you moved in and you still lie to them and you haven't given them justice still. And you're trying to criticize us? That's a reframe. Yeah. Now I'm pointing at them. And next I would say, and we would rather see you as the Atma. We'd rather see you as divine beings. We know there's a divine being in there somewhere, but it's obviously lost. Yeah. So we want to invite your divine being to come back. So this is the Namaste culture. Yes. Let's cooperate together. So now we're going to make our pitch. Let's cooperate together for the good of all living beings on the planet to live on Mata Bhumi, Mother Earth, in such a way that there's a future for our children and all the species 
let's use our technological minds to figure out how we can all benefit and not see each other as our skin color or our gender or any limitation, even our politics. Let's see each other as sacred divine beings, all who should be respected. Let's conduct the conversation that way and not to make enemies of each other and eventually destroy innocent women, children, elderly in horrible wars against the innocent. Okay, so that was just a small reframe. But I packed it with some of the necessary information, yes. the consequence of the wrong attitude. So we of the Vedic culture are inviting you to see everyone as the consciousness animating their vehicle, their body, and to show every living entity respect and to foster its well being because they all have a right to be here. Now, how can we cooperate with each other and the laws of nature? So let's change democracy to dharmocracy. See what I just did? Yeah. Democracy, it looks like the two parties hate each other. It appears not to be working. Yeah. So let's have a dharmocracy, a namaste culture. This is what the Vedic culture needs to teach to every one of their <coughs> representatives. The entrance into politics and the ability to be correctly political on behalf of Bharat requires this sophistication in speaking and reframing. Without it, your reaction to what people say, which is the negative commercial about you, yeah. proves that you don't have the correct answer. Okay. And you don't even know what just happened. Yeah. So I would suggest that from top to bottom, the culture of India, starting with Narendra Modi, his people, all the way down, have to become very linguistically aware with precise use of words that everyone agrees upon. Yeah. When I was in business, I used to make a living partly as a consultant to corporations. When someone would start a new corporation, I would say, you need to make a dictionary of words for your product. Yeah. And everyone in your company needs to use those words so that they don't make up stories about the product from themselves, but they all describe the product the same way. So there's a saying, if you throw stones in the water, if they all land in the same place, none of the ripples collide. So what you see right now with, with Bharat is a babble of voices not knowing how to speak in English who are being manipulated by people who do know how to speak in English. And this we need to change. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Rishiji, that was a thank you so much for sharing all of that wisdom with us. Um, it has been an extremely en enriching uh, conversation with you. And uh, we are very grateful to have you on our platform. Uh, and there is so much uh, that our viewers are taking away from this. Uh, and uh, thank you for inspiring us to uh, decolonize our minds, our decolonize our language. Uh, and telling us, uh, you know, the importance of all of these different uh, things. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rishiji and Pranam. Thank you, Kamal, for the wonderful service that you're rendering and for all of the inquisitive and brilliant and the idealistic people that you represent. You know, uh, it is a saying in the Sanskrit, which I'm very fond of, especially if you're trying to be of service to Bhagavan. And it is dasa 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 nu dasa. I want to be the servant of the servant of the servant of Bhagavan. Three times removed. So when I received this sacred wisdom, this great gift into my life, because I was without it when I was born. There's a famous mantra, you know this one, Oma Gana, Timirandasya, Ganan Gana, Salakaya, Chakshur. If you see something useful or in any way brilliant in me, 
believe me, I did not have it until I met the gurus and rishis and sadhus of India, of Bharat. And I am now just trying to repay my endless debt to them by being of some service to the Vedic community. And that is what my gurus taught, that when you finally contact Bhagavan, your every desire is fulfilled. You no longer chase illusory desires and call that your life. You no longer see each other in a despicable way. So you become Shanti. And in that Shanti, that true place of balance, how can you repay that? By simply trying to be of service and do some seva, real sacred seva. So thank you for doing what you're doing and giving me the opportunity to be of service and repay my debt to the Vedic community and culture and to its sadhus and gurus. So pranams, pranams. Pranams, uh, Rishi Ji. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.